Now, Jenny, I, I, what's the name? You know, it's interesting because I was on the phone with Floyd last night, right? With Floyd Mayweather? Yeah, Floyd. You know, the police are looking for Floyd. I know. I just reported that. Yeah, and I was on the phone with him last night before and after the situation that he's going through right now. And, and I just got off the phone with him. I'm, I was tripping off it because he told me what happened. He wasn't really upset. He just, you know, he was kind of confronting. Well, not confronting him, but he went over there to actually see the kids. And then he, he uh, asked about why the place looked this so bad. And then it turned into a whole other scenario. Like, cause she has a girlfriend and actually lives in, in the guest house at the house that Floyd's been paying for for. Okay, so Floyd, she lives, his baby's mother lives in his house. But uh, well, the house that he pays for, she don't work. She ain't worked since the nineties. Okay, but her girlfriend, she's a lesbian. No, no, no. It's not a girlfriend. It's just a friend. Oh, okay. Lives in the guest house. Lives in the guest house. So Floyd was like, you know, telling her she can't really, you can't really be living there. Like, and he, he don't really like the kids. The stuff that he buys for, he buys stuff for his kids that he'll buy for himself. So it's like, like he'll buy like polo shirts and stuff like that. He wants them to be presentable because he feels like it's not even feels like it. They are a reflection of him. You know. Right. And she she's talking about she don't want him to wear stuff that uh, she like she ain't gonna make them wear things they don't want to wear and, and stuff like that. And he's like, "What are you talking about? Like I spent a lot of money for this stuff." And she just had it laying all over the place. So they kind of before before it was all over. Like I know he wasn't upset, so I know what they're saying is not actually true because when he left, what he was talking to me about, you know what I'm saying? Like the whole scenario. But I you know I hope everything. You know, it pans out with that. Like I kind of went through a similar drama with my son's mom at one point. You know what I mean? Now we all right. She cooled down. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But you know, I hope everything works out for him. I know he, they ain't gonna do nothing. He ain't gonna, they're gonna walk him through. He's not even gonna be sitting in there long. You know what I mean? So wait, did you talk to him today since the incident happened? I just got off the phone with him. Oh, okay, yeah. But I was talking to him like when it happened. Oh wow! So you like like five o'clock. I spoke to him before he went, and then he called me back after it was over, saying, "Yo, you ain't gonna believe this." Like I go in there and talk to this girl. Like at that point, there was no police involved because the police went by his house. Hmm. After the fact, but he called me after he just came out of there, saying, "Yo, I went. It's dirty up in there. Like, oh, I, yo, this girl's crazy, man. Like, you know, just talking to me regular hmm. situation, and then it turned into something else. But you know, I, it, it's one of those things where you. Like, like I sit there and I say, well, I just can't. I'm like, Floyd, they're going to have a field day with this. It's going to be all over the place. Yeah, it, it is. It's everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Did you put it on This Is 50? No. No. Because, so, you know, like. Because you're friends. You know, it, it just didn't make sense because, like, to promote it, when you know they're going to take advantage of it because of his profile. Right. Well, he's a boxer. Right. But not, not only that, if, if, if someone says you, they, you hit them and, and they're a boxer, don't they have a bruise? Well, she went to the hospital, right? They said she went to the hospital. Yeah, I mean, we don't. We haven't seen any evidence, but I'm just saying. But you go to the hospital and say, oh, he grabbed my hand. Right, that's true. You know what I mean? And to make it feel, you know, real, I mean, how do you, how do you, and it's almost extortion, you know, in a different way. Hmm. To make you pay for it, I mean, behind the scenes. Right. I know, you know what I mean? I agree. What makes those things go away. Right. I agree. Yeah. How's everything else going, 50? Everything's good. Hmm. You know, like, I mean, for me right now, I'm working on a new album. Wait, you're working with Kanye. I, I read something from Kanye today. Or, no, from you. You said something about you're going to be doing a uh, song with Kanye. Well, I, I, I don't want to, whether it's him actually performing on it or producing it, you know, I want to get in with him this time. I want to get in with a lot of different producers to make this project an event and something special, you know. Like, I wouldn't turn down any good idea. I'm, you know, I would love to have an album from you. Right, I'm ready. You know, I'm, I'm working on it now, so, you know, I, I definitely going to work until I feel like I have something special to present and not be on the shot clock like it's, like I got to put it out next week. Right. Just going to work until it's good. How much pressure do you feel is on you for this album? Well, I, I haven't been, I've been an underdog from day one. I haven't been in a situation where I've been comfortable at any point of release. You know, even when, because it's new pressure. It's pressure in the beginning just to have some success, and then it's, it's pressure to sustain it. Right. The expectations of, of my music, because I've done so well, like the my first album is the largest debut in hip-hop album. When your first record sells 12 million records, what do they expect from your next single? Right. You yeah. know, and it's the same pressure that Dre's up against. 
and and the pressure that made it take ten years. That's true. You know what I'm saying? Because you you critique it so. Yeah, it's 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 we, we're going to put it under a magnifying glass and we're going to pull it apart. Right. So he's he's looking. He's he's going to make sure it's all the way right before he go. I spoke to Lloyd Banks um, two weeks ago, who said that his album's first, then your album, then Tony Ayo. Yeah. Well. You know, if, if Ye beats me with, with putting the record together, I'll, I'll put this out for it. But I, I, my artists, I've always had, like, I don't like to cut their legs off. Like, I'll slow down. I could have went in and rewrote my wrote my next album and been ready to come out with Because I wrote an album worth of material already for the Black Magic concept. But it won't be my next album. I'm writing something else before I present Black Magic. Mm. You know, it's like Eminem wrote Relapse and Relapse 2. And then decided to write recovery. Hmm. You know, so at some point you may hear some of the stuff that was off relapse too. And that I recorded three songs with him for that. Wow. Yeah. So what's going on on the movie front? Like, everything's good. Like I actually, um, I'm supposed to start another film in November, late November. So I'll be off to do that. That's why I'm completely focused on my music right now. What's the movie in November? Ah, um, Six and Santa Fe, it's a, it's a Lionsgate film. Oh, wow. Yeah. You're like a certified movie star now. I've been working. Well, do you like it better? I mean, I'm, I wonder, how are we supposed to even see you anymore? Well, not not like it better. You know, it, it's just a passion I've developed because, I mean, when you're sitting there, like, what do you do? If, if you're in music, what do you do to relax or for entertainment? You might want to watch television or a movie. Right. And you might develop a stronger passion for it because, you you know, you're surrounded by people that are involved in it. Hmm. You know, and, you know, my personal interest in it, you know, sent me off to do different things. And it's cool. Like, I picked projects that were, uh, that had artistic value to them that made me excited about being a part of it. Not necessarily the blockbuster film. I had an opportunity to be a part of one of the Transformer films, but the role wasn't as big as, they felt was good enough for me as far as my agents were concerned. And then the Expendables, I was supposed to do that. And then my album cycle came around and it was like, do I go do the Expendables on the other side of the planet for three months or do I put out my album and fragrance and everything else that I put together? So you could have done the Expendables? I, I actually could have been in Terry Crews' role. Oh, wow. I wonder if Terry Crews knows that. <laughs> He does. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> One of those those people that they sat down, that Stallone sat down with, you know, prior to deciding to use Terry Crews, you know? Um, I, I, let me ask you a question. I've been wondering this and, um, and, and kind of, you know, okay. You signed G-Unit Records with EMI, correct? Yeah. Why? Well, not the entire record company. But, you know, Banks is there and you, they got to wait for Yayo to make his announcement. Because I always think, when I think of you, I know how much money you have. Well, I mean, I don't know how much money you have now, but we, are, you know, it, it's been in the press a lot how much money you have. You're, you're a very rich person. Yeah, well, I mean, the, the issue, did you feel the difference between the launch of Bimba Benz and Bentley or any other record? No. Benz and Bentley was a, a huge, was a successful hip-hop record. Well, it was a smash because it was a smash. Right, and at the same time, that was being independently supported by my pocket. Right, so I'm wondering, why is it that G-Unit Records couldn't get to the point or can't be at the point at this moment and uh, to be as big a label as a Def Jam, Interscope, Warner Brothers, whatever, with the amount of money that you have to back your label? Well, that mean, would mean continuously putting all of your money on the line. Yeah, but you have, you have probably more money than most of the labels at this point. Personally, um, you know, I, I think... Uh, Jimmy Iovine has a whole lot of money personally, also. Yeah, but you have hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars, 50. Yeah, but why why completely put yourself in a space where each song on a song-by-song song basis is, uh, of course, Beamer, Benz, and Bentley and Any Girl, was, it's an easy gamble betting on a seasoned artist like Banks. It's not his first record, and for us to have wait, waited three years to reignite that, like it was like... Uh, before Beamer, Benz, and Bentley came out, they was counting them out. 